Have you ever given somebody advice and then they go and do the opposite? I know you have. Everybody's had this happen to them. You tell somebody to, to dump that girl or, or to not buy that car or not go to that restaurant. And then what do they do? They stay in that relationship and get hurt or they break down on the side of the highway and then call you for a tow or they call into work sick the next day because they got food poisoning. And it takes everything in you not to do the I told you so dance. And sometimes, sometimes they even say, well, why didn't you warn me? I know right now that you're thinking about a time where that happened. So let us know the story down in the comments. That'll be a fun read later. After documenting our businesses on YouTube for the last couple of years, we get one question overwhelmingly more than anything else. And this one question is, how do I find people to sell my work to? Or where do I sell my work? How can I do that? Where, where are you finding these people that pay these outrageous prices for your work? And we give the same answer every time, but nobody does it. Nobody takes the advice. If people think that it won't work, that it's too simplistic, or they're expecting us to tell them some Jedi mind trick that convinces people to buy stuff from them. That's not how it is at all. It's, it's actually a pretty simple answer. So please, please, we're begging. You, watching this video, please be the one person on the internet that makes this video worth making. Please try this little trick. We left our active duty military jobs because this trick was earning us more money than Uncle Sam was paying. We've built two businesses on opposite sides of the country on the back of this little trick. Give it a shot. Even if you don't like us, even if you don't think it'll work, even if you think it's too simple, you have nothing to lose. It's not like you're making money with your current process anyway. I can't say that. No. <laughs>moment about your favorite local coffee shop. I'm guessing it's not Starbucks. Am I right? Or am I right? So if the majority of you just said that your favorite local coffee shop isn't Starbucks, then why every time you drive past Starbucks is the drive through line wrapped around the building? Because the place you're thinking of has way better coffee for the exact same price. Like, let's admit, Starbucks coffee isn't hard to beat. So why is Starbucks more popular? Well, there's a lot of little reasons, but the main reason, if you boil it all down, is that Starbucks is better known. The unknown place is a gamble. It's uncertain, and it might not be as good as Starbucks. And, and that's what a lot of people think. So they go with the safe option, and they sit in a Starbucks drive-thru for 20 minutes to get overpriced burnt coffee four times a week. So regardless of your opinions on Starbucks coffee, I know some of you weirdos might even like it, there is a lesson to be learned here, so just play along. Better known beats better product every day of the week. So if you're trying to start a business, you need to get out there and get known. When you start a business, you can spend your time on a lot of different things. You can focus on the quality of your product, which is what most of us do. You can spend your time marketing and advertising. You can spend your time selling and networking. And we're here to say your time at the beginning is best spent getting known. Your product is good enough. If I could just teach all woodworkers one thing, you're trying to run a business, your product is good enough. Stop tinkering with it. Unless you're trying to optimize it to do it faster so you can build more because your demand is too high, your product is good enough. Stop working on your product. Start working on your sales and marketing ability because that is the bottleneck to your business growing. And I'm really aggressive right now because we fell into this trap when we started our first business in North Dakota. We spent so much time worrying about the quality of our product that we spent, we wasted, wasted so much time on thinking about our product instead of getting out there and meeting people and making sales. Because quality matters. It really Really does but it's not what sells the product quality might be a requirement for the customer but it's not what sells the customer a lot of people want high quality furniture that's gonna last a long time but they don't know where to get it because none of y'all make yourselves known so they walk into Ashley and buy something they don't want that they're not happy with all because they didn't know where to find you you're locked away in the basement trying to figure out what grit of sandpaper to use we've literally had friends tell us that they hate the furniture that they bought from the store because they wanted something higher quality and they didn't know of us sooner 
you have to do the research for the consumer. And what that means is you have to get known. They're not gonna do a Google search. They're not gonna look for you on Instagram. They're not gonna scroll to the bottom of Facebook Marketplace looking for somebody who makes quality furniture. They're gonna take what they see closest to them. So you have to be the option that's closest to them. And that's called sales and marketing. So what does that even mean? Like, what do you do to get your business known? Talk to people. Literally, that's it. Talk to people and tell them about your business. There's a thousand different ways you can talk to people about your business, but this, this is a piece of advice that we tell people all the time and nobody takes. You just have to talk to people about your business and the sales will come. So the formula for doing this right that we recommend is simply changing the hey, how are you conversation. You know that simple one where you meet somebody new, it's like, hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. And then you both walk away and it was like a totally unproductive conversation. Change that up. It's super easy. So to show you how easy it is, we're gonna role play a couple of examples. This should be fun. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. You know, I just started a woodworking business. A woodworking business? Yeah, I mean, you know, I build stuff in my garage yeah. and like I we finally built everything we needed and our friends started hitting us up for stuff and we just kind of took off from there. Wow, that's all. so what do you build? Boom. See, now we're in a business conversation. This lunch is a write-off. Just kidding. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Uh, you know, the kids just got out of school, so now I'm a full-time babysitter. Ah, uh, I understand. You should stop by sometime. I just started a woodworking business. I could use some help moving some stuff around in my shop. You just started a woodworking business? Yeah, I, uh, I build lots of furniture. I built everything I needed for our house, and I had some friends hit me up because they were interested, and... Now I build stuff for other people all the time. Oh, that's really cool. I'll have to drop by sometime. You know what? My wife needs, boom, that's how it's gonna happen. Okay, so cheesy acting aside, unless you live under a rock and have no social media, every single person has about five of those interactions every single day. Multiply that out over an entire year, that's over 1,800 interactions that you have an opportunity to tell somebody about your business. At that point, it's just a numbers game. Even a bad salesman or salesman woman can close deals with 1,800 opportunities. When you make this tiny little switch in your conversation, you're gonna get more work than you can handle. This is how we got featured in our first local magazine. It's how we started working with realtors, got referred made things for friends. We got our first hug of death by simply doing this trick. People are gonna start asking you left and right to build them stuff. And how do you close that first sale? That's the topic for the next Maker's Money. So make sure you subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss it, and we'll catch you on the next one.